Hey everybody, Doug8798 here. This is my salute of the WWE's famed Ruthless Aggression Era, which was right after the Attitude Era and officially started on... Officially started after WrestleMania 18 when Vincent Man got all the wrestlers in the ring and talked about how, uh, his history of how he wiped out every territorial promotion in the world. Now he's the last man standing and that he did it with Ruthless Aggression and inspired the younger guys to show ruthless aggression and maybe they will be superstars like the WWE superstars um I love the ruthless aggression I love the ruthless aggression era but I have a lot I have lots of problems with the ruthless aggression era um for me professional wrestling in my opinion was at its best in the of course the mid in the 80s and um 90s 90s the early to the 2000s were good especially the early 2000s but the 80s and the 90s in my opinion were the best times for professional wrestling with the nwa jim crockett's promotions territorial promotions like the awa wcc gcw promotions like that then of course you had the hulk 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 hogan rocking wrestling era then into the 90s with the territorial promotions like GCW, um, what's that promotion called again, um, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, ECW, the new generation, WF's new generation in WCW, and, um, what you call it, but it was still good in the early 2000s with, with the, in, with the invasion era, the ruthless, with the first part of the ruthless aggression era, the rise of other promotions like World Wrestling All Stars, which closed down in two thousand three, um, the rise of NWA Wild Side, one of my favorite independent promotions, and um, the rise of TNA, the rise of um TNA. But eighties and nineties were the best. But ruthless aggression from two thousand two to mid two thousand five, and two thousand seven to mid two thousand eight was awesome. 2007 to mid 2008 was the last time WWE was awesome. Was the last time WWE was awesome, and, and in mid 2008, when Randy Orton got injured and the age of Orton ended, and Triple H got drafted to SmackDown, got drafted back to SmackDown, and just went there burying, started burying wrestlers. That's when it, that's when WWE went completely downhill. This is also when they turned PG. I think this is when they turned PG, and it was just crap after that, and it's been that way ever since mid 2000 mid 2008 2011 was a good year thanks to the rock and the summer of punk storyline but it's been terrible um it's been terrible um ever since like i said from 2002 till 2005 it was awesome in my opinion it went downhill into in mid 2005 when john cena got drafted to raw and batista got drafted to smackdown Smackdown was good, but the flagship show, which was Raw, was boring. It was John Cena being shoved down everyone's throats. John Cena, he was now different. He changed his music. He was no longer the Doctor of Thugonomics. Um, he was no longer the Doctor of Thugonomics. He was Company Man Cena. He was Company Man Cena wearing company t-shirts, having that crappy My Time Is Now music, and being more cornier than usual. And being more cornered than usual, and beating two of my favorite wrestlers, Christian and Chris Jericho, and having a stale, boring feud with Kurt Angle, who Kurt Angle I thought was also becoming boring and stale by this period. Kurt Angle was awesome from '99 till two to early 2005 when he was feuding with Michaels. After that, they Kurt Angle, his career just got his WWE career just got stale. He was in that horrible storyline with Booker T and Charmel where he was a rapist. Then during his feud with John Cena, they had him as a race as a as a racist character. Yeah, uh, his career was getting stale. He still had a couple of good matches with Taker and Henry, and a match I remember with Orton. But um, yeah, his career his career was, was 2002, 2003, and 2004 were better years for Kurt Angle. Um, but yeah, then in 2006, it got even worse. It got even worse with Edge, who I was a huge fan of in the mid card from. 98 from 98 till 2000 um till 2005 to i started hating him of course because he cheated on his best friend matt hardy with lita um he cheated he uh, he had an affair with um lita he had an affair with lita 
who was who Lita was cheating on Matt Hardy. My bad. What's his name? That made me hate Edge for a bit, and then Edge, of course, he changed his character. He was no longer the um character he was in the early two thousands or in. 2004 when he was a heel when he was a crazy heel determined to do anything to get a world title shot he was now the rated r ko edge with lead and i thought i didn't like edge i didn't like the rated r ko gimmick at first because this edge was weak and he was boring and it was more about his promo abilities than what he could do in the ring and he had this boring crafty feud with john cena of course edge became the first one to win money in the bank and cashed in the Money in the Bank at Cena at New Year's Revolution 2006, which I also wasn't a fan of. I was never a fan of using the briefcase and cashing in the title on someone because that demoralizes and discredits the world heavyweight, um, that is the, the belts. Also, didn't like Cena turning the belt permanently into a spinner belt. Spinner belt, that's what I'm saying. I didn't like when guys like Cena and Edge started becoming main eventers started becoming main eventers because it did not look it did not feel like wrestling when they were main eventers it wasn't wrestling it was anything but wrestling it was promos dumb segments and boring street fights between the two edge versus cena is one of the worst feuds ever and edge versus cena are two in my opinion two of the worst wwe champions of all time at that time um then of course cena had other crappy feuds with kevin federline then um, what else, what else, oh yes, DX, DX, mm. then Sh Triple H and Shawn Michaels doing this PG DX, doing this stale PG dated DX crap, and this crappy boring feud with Vince McMahon and um, Shane McMahon, the McMahons, they were two good matches I remember, Shawn Michaels' match with Vince at WrestleMania 22, and their handicap match at an Unforgiven with the Big Show where they pulled down Big Show's tights and shoved Vince McMahon's head up Big Show's butt, but um, the um, to the mid two thousand five and two thousand six was horrible. And one of, besides the reasons I just named, another reason it was horrible is that they buried all the WCW, all the WCW wrestlers just because they didn't create them. Even Booker T and Jericho, who were even Booker T and Jericho, who were the most popular WCW stars. Who were the only WCW stars to really receive any kind of good, good push, good push. They were even they were even worse than they were in WCW. Booker T, he was made to look unintelligent in WWE, especially with that King Booker, Booker gimmick. In WCW, he was a champion, he was a top guy in the end. Um, so yeah, burying all the WCW wrestlers just because he didn't create it, then burying them firing them or causing them to leave and bringing up wrestlers like the Miz, Boogeyman, who had no business who had no business in wrestling, then bringing up wrestlers like um Heartthrobs and um Spirit Squad and the Dicks who my opinion could have been good but they just weren't ready for the roster at that time. Then later firing WWE wrestlers L then later firing good WWE wrestlers and bringing up more wrestlers from the P from from the roster in what was known as the PG era, which my opinion all that killed killed um wrestling wrestling um and then of course the schedule the um the the um the schedule the wrestlers have to travel the road schedule which I also hate. Why is that still around? It's because of that stupid schedule that Rock and Austin left, and it's because of that stupid schedule that Brock Lesnar left, leaving us with Cena being shoved down our throats for several years. See, like I said, I like this era. I like this era for, well, briefly, getting back to, um, getting back to what was missing in the Attitude Era, and that was wrestling, getting back to professional wrestling. But what I hated about this era were the politics, burying WCW wrestlers, and just overall killing your product and leading in this product, in this ruthless aggression era, especially around 2005, led to the creation of the PG era, PG era. If you look at most of the theme songs for pay-per-views in 2005, they had um soft rap, they had soft rap music, soft rap music for their shows. They had soft rap music for the shows. Like, they had Fat Joe on a feature on a pay-per-view. I love Fat Joe, but I, I don't want his music featuring. 
I don't want his music featured on WWE pro. I don't want his music featured on WWE programming. I want edgy hip hop and rock and roll, which is what they were using in the early 2000s. But um, this is when they started becoming PG, and they were doing crappy stuff like Vincent Man and Shawn Michaels versus versus Vincent Man and Shawn Mi- Vincent Man and Vincent Man versus Shawn Michaels and God. Um. Um. Edge having sex on Raw. All this crap led to the PG era. It was a toned down attitude era. Only more PG and more insulting and offensive. So much offensive stuff in the ruthless aggression um era. That gay marriage in the beginning, which I hated. I hated they were burying two good wrestlers, Billy Gunn and a good WCW wrestler, up and coming WCW wrestler, and Chuck Palumbo with that Billy and Chuck garbage. Then um. Then you had that crappy storyline with Don Marie and Tori Wilson, which is one of the worst storylines in the Ruthless Aggression era. Um, another crappy storyline was Midia and Jamie Noble, Midia being, Midia, Midia being blind. So much garbage in the Ruthless Aggression era. But like I said, when it was good, it was good. Let's talk about some of the wrestlers you had during this period. You had awesome wrestlers like Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, Shelton Benjamin, Charlie Haas, Charlie Haas, Orlando Jordan. Orlando Jordan, um, CM Punk, Kenny Dykstra, Bobby Lashley, Chris Masters, Chris Masters, that's for some of the, Ken Anderson, Ken Anderson, Ken Anderson, these were some of the young guys that were featured during this period, then you had other, um, then you had the WCW wrestlers, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, um, Eddie Guerrero, um, Mark Jindrak, Mark Jindrak, um, Sean O'Hare, Sean O'Hare, Johnny Stumboli, Johnny Stumboli, uh, Chuck Palumbo, whenever he was, he was right, and, um, then, of course, WWE wrestlers like Undertaker, Triple H, back when he was, well, he was never really that good, but he was more, I found him more entertaining during this period than do I, than I do now, um, Christian, Christian, and so so many awesome wrestlers during this period. Uh, like I said, well, this was my salute and rant on WWE's Ruthless Aggression Era. I'll talk more about this video in year-end reviews of the wrestling product from this era. All right, dug out.